Hello, we're back with another Midlife Mojo Monday. I hope everybody had a great week. I know I sure did. Can't believe it is already October 1st. Here in Florida, it's still in the 90s and we are still sweating. And between the weather, hot flashes, just the everyday activities people do, exercising, uh, you know, outdoor activities, even nerves, all these things can contribute to some excess sweating, which can also contribute to some bad body odor. So I thought that that would be a great topic for us to kind of get into a little bit tonight. And that's what we're going to be talking about. While I wait for people to get on the call, I just wanted to announce last week's winner of our trivia contest, Tracy Gauthier. I hope I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, but you know who you are. And I, you're going to be receiving a chapstick, a Young Living chapstick. It's made with essential oils. It feels so good on your lips. No chemicals. It's wonderful. So I'll go ahead and make sure I get your uh, email. I'm assuming your address, and I'll get that off to you. And this week's trivia question is, I was watching the previews the other day for A Star is Born, with the new one that's coming out with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. So this week's trivia question, which I think I'm also going to do for a prize, so out of all of the uh, correct answers, I'll choose one random person. So name me, this is the a Star is Born, this is actually the third remake, but there was one that came out in the 1970s. So, uh, name me who the, the two main stars of the 1970s version of A Star is Born. And you'll get an extra entry if you can name the year that it came out in. So, all right. Well, good. That's your trivia question for the week. You can get a little prize and everything. So, we're going to get started. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, tonight we're talking about stinky pits. And first you want to talk about why. Why are, do women in midlife all of a sudden have this change in body odor? Well, part of the reason, it's kind of like teenagers, it's just a hormone fluctuation that's going on, and that's going to cause that problem. Someone will start you know, sweating more because of the hot flashes and the night sweats, that's causing more sweat, so that's going to cause also some more body odor. But also there's things like depression and anxiety, that can cause some excess sweating and some changes in our body odors as well. So it's not always necessarily, uh, you know, this pure sweat that we're thinking of, but sometimes even the nerves that we have um, can cause these kind of odors. But at this age, for most women, the estrogen is starting to decline. And estrogen is something that helps to regulate with the hypothalamus part of the brain. And the hypothalamus is what helps regulate body temperature. So what happens is basically as the estrogen is dropping, it sends a false message to the brain telling it that it's overheated. So the brain wants to go ahead and cool down so it starts to sweat. Um, and so that's, and that's going to also result in the change in body odor as well. But in addition to hormonal changes, which is a big part of uh, the body odor for women in midlife, but there are some other factors that do come into play, some lifestyle factors like your diet, um, alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, certain synthetic fibers that you wear. I know certainly that definitely certain clothes will cause a body odor. Spicy foods like onion and garlic, right? People sometimes can say you can smell garlic on people the next day. Um, and also lack of magnesium and zinc. And then there are also some medical reasons why there might be some body odors um, as well. So all of these, a lot of reasons why we might be experiencing excessive sweating, but a specifically body odor. Um, but let's talk about some solutions. And I'm all about natural solutions. So these are some real basic, simple things that you can do. First of all, if you are having hot flashes still, if you're still in that part of midlife, don't take cold showers because that will actually activate the, the hot flash, but definitely everyone should be taking frequent showers and making sure that you're hitting the hot spots, you know, under your armpits and the groin and, and those areas, washing frequently. Um, you're going to use natural deodorants and antiperspirants, and that's actually the bulk of what we're going to be talking about today in just a little bit. You can stay well hydrated. You can avoid alcohol because that will exacerbate the odor. Maintain a healthy diet. Avoid spicy foods. Um, and then I mentioned earlier that lack of zinc and magnesium cause body odors. But those two, if so what you want to do is try to increase the zinc and magnesium. And you can get those in seafood and in nuts. And those are actually known to help eliminate body odors. So just kind of think about that a little bit when you're making your salad. Maybe with a little 
throw a little seafood in there and some nuts or something. Um, also, we talk about nerves, so managing stress and anxiety. That's going to be really important also. Uh, wearing cotton or natural fibers, changing your clothes frequently, and then figuring out how to balance your hormones. And you can watch back um, a couple of, I think the very first one I did, we talked a little bit, I think, about balancing hormones um, with some essential oils and so forth. So tonight I really want to talk specifically about the solution of deodorants and antiperspirants and so forth, um, because this is a topic that actually um, I got interested in years and years ago, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, I grew up using secret deodorant. I don't know, is anybody else out there using secret deodorant out there for years and years? What was kind of the deodorants that you were using when you were a child? So I don't know what you're using now, maybe using some natural, but what were some top deodorants that you used growing up? But I used all the different kinds, the waterproof kind, the extra strength, all the different scents. Since the time I was 11 till I was in my mid, you know, mid to late 30s. And my grandma used Secret, my mom used Secret, my sister used Secret. It was like stocked in our house. And I'm in no way saying this next statement, saying that Secret, that the Secret deodorant anyway caused any of the problems I'm about to discuss. But I just will say that my mother, my grandmother, and my sister did all end up with breast cancer. Um, my grandmother also ended up with ovarian and colon cancer. My mother had breast cancer in both of her breasts. And then, just to throw things in there. My father also ended up with breast cancer as well. So to say that, you know, this doesn't run rampant in my family is an understatement. Um, and that's also, in addition to that, I've lost great grandmothers, I've lost great aunts, I've lost aunts also to other kinds of female cancers. And I truly do believe that um, all the toxins and things that are in our products really do have a major, major contribution to all of the female cancers and the increase. But in this case specifically, you know, especially with the females in my, in my family, I, a genet genetics did definitely play a, a, a role. Everybody did have the breast cancer gene who did have the breast cancer. So I did have, um, years ago after my sister, who was in her early 30s at the time, my mother also got it in her 30s as well. Um, I Once my sister got it, I did get tested, and luckily I did not have the gene. First woman in four generations, I feel very, very grateful and lucky for that. Um, but, you know, I do have a teen daughter. I have a teen son, and having my father even getting breast cancer, men can get it as well. So deodorants and things like that, you know, products that we're putting on our skin um, that absorb things you know, really can start to start playing a factor. So again, I'm not saying, I'm not putting anything out there, nobody from Secret come attack me or anything, that it caused any of these issues, but I do believe that toxins in some of our products can cause that. And Secret is one of those products that does have um, some, some things in it that I don't like so much that we're gonna talk about in just a minute. But a little bit of history about deodorant. I looked this up today and I thought this was interesting. The first deodorant was um, introduced in 1888 and it was the odor bacteria kind. And then 15 years later, they introduced antiperspirant, which added to the deodorant, which was not just for odors, but also to prevent the sweat. And then for a long time, people didn't buy into it. They kind of actually thought it was kind of unhealthy. Until like the early to mid 1900s, and then get this, some I guess, you know, copyright editor who was doing this advertising, put it out there into women's heads that they might possibly be smelling bad. And this insecurity, this is actually a fact, the strategy of exploiting female insecurity, I'm gonna read this. The Smithsonian reported that with doing that, the sales of this de one deodorant company reached a million dollars by 1927. So basically, you know, by just telling women that their armpits might be smelly and it might be an odor, something they had to worry about, um, there launched a whole entire, you know, thing of women from the 20s on feeling the need to have to have, you know, pretty smelling pits all the time and not really even thinking about what they were putting on them in order for that to happen. But I think in this day and age, in 2008, we've kind of come full circle. People definitely are starting to look towards natural things. People have heard some different things about deodorants and so forth. Um, but then they're finding out that it's not always necessary, effective, or even healthy to use different deodorants and antiperspirants. So here are some risk factors involved. Antiperspirants, number one, may kill actually off the beneficial armpit bacteria that we need. 
and it helps to balance our body's pH and so forth, and it helps to fight different pathogens. So the deodorant might be actually killing off beneficial um, bacteria, but it also, this is, the, I thought this was interesting, it also may be actually causing us to have more bacteria that causes body odor. So your deodorant may actually be causing more body odor. And people have found that actually when you quit antiperspirants after a time period, you may find that the smell goes away. And this is, I got a real life story about this. And this, honestly, I did not know this until like this week. But I was talking to my husband and I, I don't know, I was telling him, you know, I was sweating myself and I'm saying, talking about how I stunk and I was saying that I think I'm going to do my topic on body odor this week. And I said to him something about deodorant and what he was using these days, because he always used to get his own deodorant. It was always like Axe or one of those kind of deodorants, an Old Spice or Brute, one of those kinds. And he always had problems. He always had rashes under his armpits. And when I asked him, so what was he using these days? He said, I haven't used deodorant in two years. And I said, what? And he said, I haven't used deodorant in two years. It was irritating me and I stopped using it and you never seem to complain about me smelling. So I figured it's okay. So that to me really showed how our bodies can really, I mean, that just shocked me. He's a man, you know, that really our bodies can adapt, um, you know, to time and that we don't necessarily need to be adding these pretty smelling things to our, our you know, our bodies and so forth. And then I want to talk a little bit about, and you can do your own research on this. I'm not a doctor or anything. I did my research, and you can do yours. But um, on antiperspirants on cancer. And I, you know, I, when I was reading about this, you know, there are a lot of different things out there. There were studies done years ago that were talking about some kind of link, and then people are saying there's not a link. So I really, as anything that I ever talk about, I always recommend people going out and doing their own research. That definitely is the best. But the thing with the with the ingredient that, or one of the ingredients that kind of um, concern people with making that link is the aluminum that's in the antiperspirant, and the aluminum is what stops the sweat. So it's thought to you know to kind of plug up almost the uh, the sweat ducts to reduce the sweating, and that's you know something that people have concern about because then it kind of gets backed up into there the toxins. And then I'm just going to read this. Aluminum antiperspirants may act as a long-term source of exposure to aluminum, which research suggests may accumulate in breast tissue in women. Studies also show a high incidence of breast cancer in the upper outer quadrant of the breast nearest to where antiperspirants are applied. So I just thought that was interesting. And then another ingredient in, in deodorants that people really need to be aware of is parabens. And I'm not going to go off on a whole tangent about parabens. I'm definitely one of these days going to do a full, you know, Midlife Mojo Monday on it and spend 15 minutes talking about the dangers of parabens. But just know that they're a preservative, a preservative that is found in most antiperspirants and deodorants. And these chemicals have an estrogenic activity. They're estrogen-like. So it's like fake estrogen, man-made estrogen being put into our bodies. And I know I've talked about that in past Midlife Mojo, so you can go back and read more about that. But um, in Human Breast Cancer Cells and Research, published in 2012, listen to this, it found one or more parabens in 99% of the 160 tissue samples collected from 40 different mastectomies. So although there isn't a definitive link, there has been a growing collection of research that is starting to support this. So please, as I mentioned, go do your own research. So let's get into some you know, natural solutions. I want to kind of talk about some of the things that I like to do. And you've spent years now putting all these chemicals you know, right onto our pits in that kind of area, our armpits. So I recommend starting with an armpit detox. And I did one of these about a year ago, and actually I kind of recommend doing it every six months, so I, I, I'm due again. But it's, you use a mixture of bentonite clay, bentonite clay um, apple cider vinegar, and apple cider vinegar. And those two things can help, you know, um, pull the toxins out of your body. So bentonite clay is made from volcanic ash, and it's mixed with the minerals of the earth, and it helps to remove toxins, heavy metals, chemicals, and just other kinds of impurities from the skin and the body. And But it by itself or mixed with water is pretty harsh on our skin, so it's, when it's mixed with um, apple cider vinegar, it kind of helps to balance the pH and it makes our, um, helps our body um, you know, tolerate it better so we don't have any kind of irritation. And apple cider vinegar is also an astringent and an antibacterial um, ingredient as well, so that's going to help um, you know, with the detox as well.
So I'm going to put, after I'm done with this, I'm going to put a recipe for an armpit detox. And really all you do is just mix up those two ingredients, stick it on here. It's like this grayish, greenish color. You know, I took some pictures last time I did. It's not all that pretty. <laughs> and uh, let it sit there for, I can't remember how long. I'll write it in there, maybe 15 minutes or so. I, I'll read. I can't quite remember. And then, uh, and then just kind of wash it off. And that's just kind of one. And you can do it again. And I'm going to, again, I'll put specific directions. But I want to talk about some natural uh, deodorants that, because some people do want a deodorant. I do. I still, I have to admit, I do like smelling a little bit prettier there in my armpits. So I did look. Um, I've done a lot of research on natural deodorants because I have some weird sweating issue. I'm pretty sure it's hormonal because it started right at 40. But uh, for those who've known me, I pretty much wear dark colors, white or loud prints because I just, I, I have this sweating issue and um, it's long before any kind of hot flash or night sweats. Um, just in the, since I turned 40, I don't know. So I'm hoping as I enter 50, which will be in the next couple of years, it will go away just as strangely as it came in. But finding deodorant that worked that was natural has been a chore for me. Um, and I've tried different things. So um, all three of these have actually worked really nicely for me. I just kind of switched things up. Um, I feel like our body gets used to something after a while and doesn't work as well. So I think it's important to change things up. So um, I started with the Young Living. Um, they, for those of you uh, who are using Young Living or you don't, um, if you don't know anything about Young Living, it's an essential oil based, um, it's an essential oil company and they have also got essential oil infused products. And I love all of their products and they are what I'm recommending when I talk about anything to do with essential oils. I'm not going to go into the whole spiel about them and the story behind them. Um, you certainly, I can talk about that another time. But um, if you are choosing to use any other essential oil products or essential oils, just know that I'm spe specifically talking about Young Living and just do your research into what's into those products. But Young Living has, um, they have a different couple of different uh, scents of deodorant. They have a meadow mist and they have a mountain mist. And the Young Living deodorants are also infused with essential oils. Their base is, uh, let me look at read this so I get it right. It's coconut oil, beeswax, vitamin E, and pure essential oils. And the, my kids, my teens love these. This is what they use. They absolutely love these. My daughter just ran out. Just This is her new one. Just I just actually had a caller to go bring it to me uh, before I got on live. They love it. And in the beginning, that was one of the ones I use. I just rotate um, out, but now, then I kind of moved on. And I decided to try something different. Because as I said, you know, after times your body gets used to things. So then I moved on and I tried this crystal salt stick. Has anybody ever tried the crystal salt before? I know I had my friend Sharon recommended this to me. I don't know if you can see it. It's like literally this is like a salt stick. It's like a crystal salt stick. That's exactly what it is. And right here on the bottle it said it lasts a year. Okay, and this I can't remember. Ten, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 bucks, not very expensive. And it lasts a full year. And I've used this for a very long time. Um, I love it. What it does is when you go to glide it on, you just kind of like lightly wet it so it glides on nice and smoothly. And it definitely helps to prevent the sweating. Um, you know, it's a natural crystal salt. Um, and let me just read about this. It's a natural mineral salt, which is shown also to have microbial properties. The mineral salt has been used in deodorants in Southeast Asia for hundreds of years. But, you know, it, didn't, it doesn't have a scent, and so I like to have a scent. So what I always do is I would glide this on first, then just take a little bit of coconut oil mixed with an essential oil in my fingertips, and then I would just dab that on on top of it so I could have a little scent. So that's another great choice. And then I, in June, I was at a Young Living convention. And this is not a Young Living product, but I was um, introduced to, I, one of the booths had this. And like I said, I'm always on the hunt for just a new kind of deodorant. And this really intrigued me. And it's called My Base. And it's a probiotic deodorant, which also kind of interested me. And um, it has, and what you do is, it's a, it's a base, and then you can add essential oils to it, which I love because I can kind of change up what I want to use every single day. I don't have to just have one essential oil, although I do always tend to use my Lang Lang. I do love my Lang Lang. Oh, let me even turn down my diffuser today. Let me see. Just realized that. There we go. Um, that was a little aside, but I was, you know, I love having my diffuser while I'm, while I'm up here. 
So anyway, sorry, back to the my base. So what it does is it absorbs moisture, which I love. It neutralizes the smelly bacteria, and it helps create a balanced pH. And so what the base is made up of is butter, arrowroot, baking soda, coconut oil, apricot kernel, beeswax, and probiotics. And I wanted just to kind of show you this one a little bit. Um, this is a brand new one I just got. So it's a nice solid, but because of those things I did, if I was to leave this out in the sun or in my car, it would melt down to a liquid, and then it would be hardened again when it cooled down a little bit. But that's what it looks like, and then here's kind of the end of one right here, and my God, my right there we go. And so all you would do is you kind of pull this off, and then you kind of go, ooh, that was lovely. Um, <laughs> and then you would put it um, right on you. So that's probably the only thing about it I don't love is that I gotta use my fingertips on it. But you know, oh well, that's the worst case. And then what I'll do is I'll take an essential oil, like with this one now that it's a brand new one, I'll put a drop of my essential oil on. And maybe the first third of it, I'll mix it all in because one drop goes a long way. And then when I kind of don't smell it anymore, I'll put another drop in and mix it. And, and that's what I do. And I am going to say that this My Base is a little bit pricey. I'm not going to say that it's not. It was $20 for this small thing. Um, they say that it lasts, I think they say three to four months. It lasted me about two months, so I don't know if I'm just using it more or, or not, but um, that's how long it lasted me. So that's kind of my pit talk for tonight. I kind of went over my time a little bit. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Mary, you struggled to use, oh, what do you like? You found Piper Way? Yes. I've heard Piper Way is a great one that people like. I know some of my oils girls love it as well. So that's another great brand you can use. I haven't tried that one yet. So some other quick alternatives, you know, I, I guess my whole thing is if you're not already using a safer deodorant, please just, you know, consider going ahead and switching to one. It's such an easy fix. I just named three things that you can buy. Mary just named another thing. Some people just use baking soda. Some people just use plain coconut oil. It's that easy to get rid of really one of the products that um, can be one of the more harmful ones to your body. So remember, for those of you who joined in late, put in the comments, uh, you know, for what for a raffle to uh, to enter for the raffle prize for this week. Answer the question: Who were the two main stars of the 1970s version of *Star Is Born*? And if you can get a bonus raffle entry, if you name me the year. So that is it. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Midlife Mojo Monday, and I will see you guys next week. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure to put that recipe for the detox in the comments, the armpit detox. And if anybody does it, definitely let me know. I'd love to know what you think about it. All right. Have a great night. Bye-bye.